Mary Magdalene interviews Jesus on the subject of how the human soul functions. The interview took place in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia, on the 10th of April 2013. This is session one, part three. <laughs> Welcome everyone this afternoon. Uh, I'm Mary Magdalene. I'm going to be interviewing Jesus. Uh, it's a continuation of an an interview that he started with Luli Faber mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago about how the human soul operates. And today I'd just like to ask you about, I suppose it's the seventh principle uh, pertaining to how the human soul operates called suppression. Yes. So would you be able to explain to us the principle of suppression, suppression. Yep. as regards to the soul? So this is, this is a very important principle when it comes to the soul because, and it's this principle that I feel that most people on the planet do not understand about their own soul and how their own emotions work. And that is that if you attempt to suppress one emotion inside of the soul, then all emotions will be suppressed to a certain degree inside of the soul at the same time. In other words, it's impossible to have a suppression of one emotion and not expect that the rest of the soul can operate uh, with free expression. Mm -hmm. And I think I've, I'll just probably like to read the, my description of it sure. and then we can discuss it in a bit more detail. I've said that suppression is the principle that a person using their will to suppress any one emotion within the soul will also suppress the entire soul and be therefore unable to experience all emotions to the full extent, whether the emotion being suppressed is painful or pleasurable, and whether the emotion desired is pleasurable. Mm. So I've been quite specific there with that definition because it's very important that people understand that they can even attempt to suppress pleasure mm -hmm. and that will also have an, uh, an effect of suppressing other parts of their soul as well. It just... It, the soul, it's impossible to suppress one single emotion inside of the soul without it having an effect on the other parts of the soul. And I constantly find people believing otherwise. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and the reality is that if you want to progress towards God, attempting suppression of any emotion inside of the soul is very counterproductive towards your progression mm. uh, in, in terms of any soul progression that you might make. I feel a lot of people believe they can do it and, uh, and also dearly desire to do it. And as a result of that, they often have a degree of success of suppressing an emotion without understanding the effects it's having on the rest of their soul. Yeah, so if we can maybe talk about that. So talk about a few examples. Some examples mm. and, and also what you mean by people believe that they can do it and now, they might not have a conscious belief that they can do it, but no. their behaviour Their behaviour is such that they believe they can do it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's a very common belief on the planet. Yeah. Like, you, you look at, in, in almost everybody's day-to-day -day life, they are suppressing certain feelings. You can see it written all over their body, their face, everything, how much they are in suppression of certain emotions. And they believe they can still have other emotions that they feel are good to the full extent, and they can't. Mm. That's the sad thing is that you can never experience any positive emotion to the full extent while you're suppressing negative emotions. Mm -hmm. It's just impossible. So let's talk about some examples. Mm -hmm. Do you have some examples that would demonstrate this principle? Um, none that come to mind readily at okay. the moment. <laughs> uh, what if I, I can think of sure, a couple of sure. things? Um, and I have a few clarifying questions I'd like to ask as we sure. go along. But sure. um, say I'm... I'm, I'm really afraid of a lot of things in my life. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm afraid of uh, being humiliated. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid of making mistakes. I'm afraid of um, disappointment. I'm afraid of trying really hard for something and then, you know... Feeling disappointed feeling that you never that got there at the or, end. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. So, so let's say that's me and I've got all those emotions. Mm -hmm. And as I'm going through my life, certain things happen in my work life, say, and these emotions begin to be triggered. Mm -hmm. From what you're saying, if I then suppress those emotions, mm -hmm. I'm basically... Which you're already doing before they are triggered anyway. Yes. Because they just... would never be triggered. With the, the law of attraction would never operate in such a way that emotions that you didn't have would be triggered. <laughs> so so the, the way the law of attraction works is that it's a perfect law of God 
And it works in such a manner that the actual feelings that you have within yourself cause the attraction. Mm -hmm. So, so it's, it's not the actual future things that happen as a result of the trigger. The trigger is the result of the soul already being in the state of suppression. Okay, so mm -hmm. so given that, mm -hmm. then we know that I'm already suppressing those fears Pushing in my day-to-day -day in your day-to-day -day life. Yep. So what does that mean for the rest of my soul? Well, firstly, every aspect of your life that is under the control of those particular areas that you're suppressing will also be affected by your suppression. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if you're afraid of humiliation, this will cause you to no longer act freely, in, yeah. particularly in public or in company. Mm -hmm. So this, uh, this is a subsequent result of the suppression of that humiliation emotion. Mm -hmm. While you're suppressing the emotion of being humiliated, you're also now taking and making decisions and choices that cause you to avoid areas where you might finish up being humiliated. And so, of course, it's affecting a large area of your life already. And that's my actions. And that's it? your actions. So it's so, affecting my actions. So it's affecting sure. your actions and your decisions and your choices that you're making right at the moment, right at the time. Yep. But larger than that, it has an effect inside of the soul when it comes to desire. Uh -huh. So while I'm, while I'm suppressing fear in my soul, I am also suppressing every other thing inside of my soul. And the extent to which I suppress the fear will be the extent that I'll suppress other parts of my soul. So if I suppress a, a feeling that I will eventually be humiliated and I don't allow that feeling to be experienced, I am also suppressing all of my desires. Mm. So this includes all of my sexual desires, all of my desires for, you know, in terms of my day-to-day -day life, in terms of love-based relationships. It includes all of my desires with my children, my desires for my future, and all of these other areas, my creativity, your creativity like and all these other areas are all suppressed yep. at the same time. Yep. You can't connect to them. You won't be able to connect to them. So, so we're having a much larger effect than it just affecting our actions about the particular thing that we think the fear is related to. Mm -hmm. the, rea the reality is that when we suppress it, our soul, we're suppressing whole areas of our soul now Areas that are completely unrelated even to the original point of suppression. Mm -hmm. And this is where I feel most people don't have any understanding at all of to why they feel disconnected from their lives. They're disconnected from their lives because they are suppressing certain aspects of the life that causes the soul to suppress all parts of those things associated with those, with those aspects, as well as suppressing any other emotion that may be just as overwhelming, even if it's in a positive way or a negative direction. So, so it has a powerful effect on the soul in lots of different ways and, and ways in which most people on the planet have no appreciation of yep, in terms of their day-to-day -day life. And most people do complain that they're not, you know, many people on the planet now are complaining that they don't feel connected with themselves, they don't feel connected with their life, they don't feel joy in their day-to-day -day life much at all. And this is because of the level of suppression they have of the, what they view as the painful emotions. And this, this suppression of painful emotion causes a suppression of the experience of pleasurable emotions. Mm. And in the end, you end up with a suppressed person unable to experience pain or pleasure mm. and doing even extreme things in order to feel as a result. So, it, and so from what you're saying, I have a picture of um, this kind of dampened down soul. As soon as uh, within our soul, we know, or oh, I feel that there's all these emotions and passions and desires and all these things. Mm -hmm. Some of them are happy, loving. But, but some for of them, them to be experienced, they have to be, they have to come out of the soul. Yes. They can't remain within the soul. They have to be experienced by, being, by, by going through an experience of, of the release of these emotions. So these emotions will come out of the soul. That's our natural state. Our natural state is to have desires, but not only have them, but also to act upon them. Uh -huh. That's our natural state. We act upon all of our desires. Have our desires, have our emotions. And, and they, act upon them. And experience them. Experience them. them. Yep. And, and, and we see the experience of them. Mm -hmm. We feel the experience of them. That's how the energy of these emotions are, is released. Right. Mm -hmm. So if we didn't have any suppression, 
our soul would be experiencing desire and emotion in a really expansive way. In Is a that constant right? state of experience. Yep. So there'll be emotions and desires and passions all being experienced. There'll be a lot of joy because we're not suppressing anything. Any times we're, we're acting out of harmony with love by the experience of these desires, there'd also be a lot of pain. And, and this is what, pro what the problem is. What the problem is, is we're in this state naturally where we, we, we'll, we will naturally experience desires, passions and longings and all these other things. And it will all fly out of our soul as a never-ending stream of energy, mm -hmm. if you like. And, and what we do is because we've acted out of harmony with God's laws of love, some of these things that come out of the soul are painful in their experience. Mm -hmm. And so what we then do, instead of correcting the action that's out of harmony with the law, we decide to suppress the result by suppressing the painful experience. Now, the painful experience is the result of our action out of harmony with the law. It is not the cause of our pain. The pain is the result or the effect of my actions that have out of harmony with love. So when I choose to suppress the pain, mm -hmm. I am not addressing the cause mm -hmm. of the pain. Mm -hmm. And also, due to the way the soul has been made, I will suppress even the pleasure and the good things that my soul has also created. So this, yes, wow. <laughs> it's you pretty know, big when I mean, you think big about it that statement, way. statement, yes. Because, it, because basically what we're saying is that it, it, if we look at the truth about God's laws, we know the truth about God's laws are such that whenever I break them or whenever I act out of harmony with them, I will have pain and suffering as a result. So the real cause of any pain that's within my soul is, is the action taken out of harmony with love. That's the real cause. Now, most of the time we don't honour that as the real cause, right? And the majority of people on the planet don't honour that as the real cause of their pain and suffering. Mm -hmm. So what they do is they feel the pain and suffering that is the result of acting out of harmony with the true cause. But instead, instead of attempting to correct the cause, they suppress the result. Yes. But what I'm saying with this principle of suppression is that if you choose to suppress the pain and suffering, which is the result of a cause of breaking the law, if you choose to suppress it, you suppress not only it, the very thing that causes that, that is the pain and suffering, but you suppress also the experience of any pleasure. Mm. And this is a, a compensatory effect that's placed upon the soul but as a part of the nature of how God's created it to show you that something is wrong with, the, with, with choosing suppression. Mm. Right? So what God's trying to do in, with the... And this is a law that governs the soul. What try, God's trying to do with this particular law that governs the soul, a principle that governs the soul, is he's trying to expose to us the results of our own suppression. Yeah. Yeah. Of pain. Mm. So, so, so if we look at it more fully, <laughs> the breaking of the law creates the pain. Yes. The suppression of the pain causes the suppression also of pleasure, which, which results in more pain. Mm -hmm. So what God's trying to attempt to show us is if you try to solve the effect rather than getting at the cause, you're going to create more pain and suffering for your soul. Mm. And that's really what God's trying to do through this principle of suppression, suppression, to show us that when we choose suppression, we're actually causing a further degradation of our own experience. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we're going to cause more pain to our own experience. Yeah. Mm. So understanding a little bit more about the dynamics of this law or mm -hmm. this principle and how it works on the soul, as, I, as we said earlier, the soul in its natural expansive state is feeling all kinds of things. And as you mentioned, when it acts out of harmony with the law, there's pain. There's pain and that's an experience. So, yes. And so um, if I imagine the soul as a really big soul now, yeah. and so there's lots of passions and joy and all these things, as well as oh, I just act out of harmony with the law, there's pain. Yep. So now if I choose to then suppress that pain... Mm -hmm. Rather Based, than experience it. Yes, rather than experiencing. And remember the pain is the consequence of breaking the law. So it's a part of the law of compensation. It needs to be experienced if we're going to ever grow. Yep. 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 So as I suppress it, mm -hmm. uh, what I'm getting a vision of is that everything Contracts. suppresses with it. 
yes. to the point of my suppression. Is this correct? That's correct. So I'll still, if I suppress it a whole heap, vroom, everything gets very small. Yes. If I allow a little bit of the pain and then I put a dampener on it, then I'm still allowing You'll have some joy, pleasure, pleasure mm. desire, passion, and other other emotions. Mm-hmm. Um, but and then if I feel a fear in there and I suppress that, then everything has to contract again with it. So it's really about, from what you're saying, the experience of any emotion yes. is affected by the suppression of just one. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And, it's, and it's the experience of every emotion is affected by the suppression of just one emotion. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Just one emotion. Yeah. Um, so <coughs> to the level that we're uh, allowing any emotion would be the greatest extent. For the level I allow my painful emotion, Yes. It's the same amount I will allow the... My pleasure. My pleasure. Exactly. Yes. You can see how this is impacting upon many people's lives today, yes. really. Like, uh, for example, many people, many women complain of a lack of sexual pleasure in their, in their day-to-day life, and particularly when they have a relationship with a partner. So if we look at what they are looking for, they're looking to have sexual pleasure, mm-hmm. but their sexual pleasure is greatly suppressed. Many women complain that they don't orgasm easily, um, <clears throat> they don't uh, enjoy sex as a result because they, they, it's a, it becomes a trauma and a chore. Um, they don't uh, connect with their body during sex as a result of, uh, of all of these particular things. And the question needs to be asked is what's really happening? What's, so from what you're saying, what's really being suppressed? Yeah, what's really being suppressed? And if many women look at it, excuse me, I'll just have a cough. Okay. Yeah, there's obviously a heap of people in the spirit who are not very happy with that particular <laughs> point. I'm, I'm still <coughs> feeling a bit suppressed about talking about it even. The, uh, and there's an external contraction and I can feel mm-hmm. but um, let's uh, let's try to talk about this issue with with women with their orgasm mm-hmm. many women complain that they find it difficult to connect to their orgasm to, to have an orgasm and so forth and particularly just having an orgasm through sexual intercourse you know they need sti- cl- stimulus of their clitoris uh, along with other things perhaps you know sometimes vibrators and other things in order to achieve an orgasm and the question becomes, well, why is their body so shut down to the effect of these stimuli when other women's body is very, very sensitive to these particular things? And the, the answer is because they're suppressing certain emotions that control the responses of those particular organs. Now, most of the, emo- the emotions that control the response of those particular organs are based around fear and rage, fear and anger. And, and if you look at the general uh, feelings of women towards men, you can see that there is generally a lot of anger uh, towards men, some understandably so, and, and also uh, some fear associated with men, particularly men from a sexual perspective. You know, there's a lot of fear of the man's penis, there's a lot of fear of being penetrated, there's a lot of fear of, you know, ha- having an allowance of the heart to be involved in the sex act, for example. And all of these particular fears, the women generally try to suppress. So in other words, they they try to keep these feelings at bay. They push them down. And in the process of pushing them down, they also desensitise their own body to the effect of stimuli that could bring them pleasure in the same area. And this is one of the subsequent effects of trying to shut down the soul. So you shut down the soul in one particular area, you're going to find there's there's an effect in lots of different areas of your body. And, and, and sensation-wise. Remember, every physical sensation that's in your body is a connection point to your soul. Mm-hmm. So the soul absorbs feelings and sensations and emotions. So while I'm shutting down certain feelings within my soul, I am also shutting down the soul's ability to experience the sensations that are coming from the bodies, from the spiritual and the material body. Yeah. As a result of that, I am shutting down the body's ability to, to have the full expression of their sensory, of the sensory expression mm-hmm. given to the soul, which means the soul now is completely suppressed in those particular areas. Yeah. Now, when it comes to issues of things like orgasm, this requires a large sensitivity to, to touch and feel feelings and so forth. And, and if you're suppressing all the emotions that cause the suppression of those bodily areas. Yeah. And this is one thing most people don't understand either. When you suppress your emotion, 
you also suppress the sensory apparatus of your bodies, your spiritual and material bodies. And your spiritual and material bodies become less sensitive to touch, less sensitive to stimulus, less sensitive to pain, less sensitive to pleasure mm -hmm. as, a, as a direct result of shutting down different emotions in the soul. And so many people are complaining that they don't, you know, their body doesn't seem to work very well, but not understanding that, that this is under the direct control of the, of the shutting down of the soul's emotions. Mm -hmm. hmm. And therefore, and remember the soul is not just emotions, it's also sensory input. So all of the sensory input of all of these different experiences that come through the physical and the spiritual bodies enter the soul. And if we're shutting down the soul, we're shutting down the experience, the emotional experience of these sensory inputs, which, which has the effect of dulling the sensory input. In other words, we can no longer feel certain parts of our body even. And we can even get to the point where we no longer even feel it as a sensation yeah. if we shut down our emotions to a large degree. Yeah. And people have experienced that where they've have gotten to the point where they've shut down this, shut down that, shut down this, that they can't even experience pain anymore and they can't experience pleasure anymore. And they finish up even cutting themselves and doing all sorts of things themselves just to feel yeah not understanding that the reason why they've gotten into this particular condition is because of their choice exercise to shut down one or two specific emotions, mm -hmm. one or two specific feelings that they view as painful. Yeah. Mm. So uh, you spoke about, um, well, this idea that just shutting down one emotion, or the, the level of overwhelm or the level of allowance of emotion affects globally the level of allowance of all emotion. Yes. Um, and sometimes we shut down pleasure, don't we? Of course. Yeah, yeah for sometimes all sorts of reasons. There's a fear associated with pleasure. That yes, a lot, a lot of people are down. afraid of being controlled by their pleasure. Yeah. So, uh, in other words, their fear of a lack of control mm -hmm. causes them to shut down their pleasure. Yeah. So they want control and in, to, 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 in order to have control... They shut down their pleasure so that they're no longer drawn into feeling controlled by their pleasure. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes. And as a result of that, they're also shutting down other parts of their soul. Yeah. They're shutting down all parts of their soul, not just their pleasures centre in that particular area where they're shutting down. So, for example, if we use another sexual example here, because it's common in a sexual example, and that is a person, let's say a person is afraid of uh, love. They're afraid of ever entering a love-based relationship and they realise that their sexual pleasure may draw them into a love-based relationship at some point. So in other words, they understand that, that if they enter sexual, a sexual interaction with somebody that they may become so overwhelmed by the joy of the sexual pleasure of the interaction that they want the person so much that now they feel their life's out of control. Mm -hmm. So what they do instead of, instead of allowing all of that to occur is they shut down their heart to love and shut down their heart to any sexual pleasure. Right? Now, of course, that means that, that they'll shut down their, their own sexual pleasure even through masturbation or anything. They'll shut down all of that as well as a natural result. Because, and they'll also shut down a lot of other experiences of pleasure and pain that they may have throughout their life as a result of attempting to greatly suppress this particular aspect of their life. Mm -hmm. So it can happen with regard to pleasure or pain. Yes. It might not be just pain that causes us to shut down all of our soul, but it can also be our pleasure, uh, you know, or our fear of pleasure and where pleasure may lead us mm -hmm. that causes us to shut down a soul. Yeah. You see this happen with a lot of people who are religious. They, they have a deep fear of exercising pleasure in disharmony with what they believe to be God's laws. And so what they do is they shut down their sexual desires or they shut down their pleasures that, that they believe are out of harmony with God's laws. But the problem is, is they start, as a result of that, shutting down all pleasure mm -hmm. and they sh start shutting down all pain and they become less and less sensitive to, to the things that they do until they have some kind of awakening to what's really going on. Sure. Mm. Um, but a lot of us, frankly, we just want to avoid discomfort, don't we? And Most of the time. still want to have... Pleasure. We still want to party, but not have any like. Yeah, and hard this is times. why the partying has to become more and more intense in order to be felt. Yeah. 
Yeah. This is why people turn to drugs when they're partying and they turn, it's not, it's not, not happy with the dance anymore. You know, <laughs> they have to have a dance with drugs and alcohol and, and, and lots of sex and even then it didn't feel satisfying. Yeah. And the reason why is because we're desensitised mm -hmm. to the actual pleasure that the original thing could have brought us because we've shut down our, our, our ability to experience the sensory pleasure that results from it. So then the first part of this is really the, the willingness I have to experience any emotion will affect my capacity to experience any other emotion. Exactly. So um, the state of openness I have to any single emotion is the least amount that I'm open to an emotion is the maximum amount I'll be open to any other emotion. Is that correct? Well, it's not strictly correct because we may allow certain other emotions to a greater degree, but they will be suppressed in their experience is what I'm saying. Yeah, they won't so be their full They experience. won't be their full experience. Gotcha. They can never be their full experience. Uh -huh. You will never be satisfied by the experience of it because you're already suppressing in another area. Sure. Suppression in one area causes suppression of all areas to, to maybe to a lesser degree, but it still causes the suppression. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Because my next question was going to be, say you have, a, yeah, you used a, the instance of sexual pleasure mm -hmm. or sexual terror, let's say. Yep. So say someone's abused in their childhood and there's a, a, a lot of sexual trauma and terror that as they grow, they suppress mm -hmm. or at the time they suppress in order to survive. Yeah, and, and usually their parents or surroundings or the abuser themselves suppresses suppress it in the person. So they enter adulthood with a lot of suppression of these specific emotions. Yes. Now, is it true that then especially the groups of emotions surrounding intimacy and sex will be the most suppressed yes. in them? And they might have more allowance of other emotions in other areas. They may have more allowance of other emotions, but the problem with all of the other emotions is they will also be suppressed. So in other words, the joy that they'll experience in all aspects of their life will be suppressed. Uh-huh not just the area that revolves around sexual activity or love-based relationships. So this is a problem, is that if you choose to not heal and suppress certain emotions within you, you are really choosing the complete suppression of your soul in all of its aspects to lesser degree to or varying greater degree, degrees. To varying degrees, yeah, yeah. depending on the relationship those degrees have with the original problem. Sure. But you are suppressing every aspect, every aspect, not just... Even aspects that are completely unrelated, you are suppressing. So in that example, it's a woman who's been abused and she enters adulthood. Now the area of sexuality in her life is damaged and suppressed and she's not dealing with it. So sexual pleasure doesn't happen and there's all this sexual terror. Or she only her. gets sexual pleasure when she's in a, you know, An abusive in a controlling situation or abusive situation. Uh, when she's in control or someone's controlling her. her. Yeah, yeah, one of the two probably usually happens. But that's still a suppression. Still of a suppression of what could be the actual pleasure, gotcha. which is a beautiful, loving relationship where both people are open and, and experiencing the pleasure. Got gotcha. you. Mm. And say in other areas of life, she's an auntie and she's got a great career and all these other things. Mm -hmm. From what you're saying in this principle, though, it's still there'll still be a suppression or an impedance on the level of emotion or joy she's able to experience. From anything in those other aspects of her From life. every aspect of her life. Yeah. She, she will find all sorts of aspects of her life. And this is why you find people who have been abused often, often suppress the sexual part of their life or they act out their sexual part of their life. Mm -hmm. But also in doing this, they actively engage a lot of other activities trying to trying to distract themselves from the, but they never get full satisfaction of those particular activities either. They are good at them, mm -hmm. but they never feel personally satisfied. Yeah. And that is because their soul is suppressed to, the, to, to satisfaction gotcha. and uh, because of the suppression that's occurred based on of the painful experience. Mm. Yeah. yeah. It's quite a powerful uh, principle. principle. Yeah, if a person fully understands this principle, they will start to understand the total necessity of remaining open to all emotion and, and the total, what's the word I'm looking for? Pointlessness. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's not even the word I really want. Futility. Yeah. Futility yeah. of trying to suppress one single emotion. Yeah. It, 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 uh, if they could understand that it's a completely futile process suppressing emotion because all you're doing is supp you're suppressing the potential of your, further, your, your, your future joy. 
And, and this obviously is going to be very, very damaging to a soul that wishes to grow. Yeah. Now, also bearing in mind that divine love is a joy to receive, if you're suppressing any one emotion, you're suppressing the experience of any love that you, will have entered you as well. And, and this obviously is going to have a big effect on your life. Mm-hmm. So, so even if we look at it from the perspective of receiving divine love, it's a very damaging thing to do to suppress emotion inside of your soul. Now, I'm not suggesting you have to act upon every emotion inside of your soul. Mm-hmm. So I'm not suggesting that you feel an emotion that, that, that is a feeling of, maybe a feeling of some, doing something degrading and you choose to act upon it because to not do it would be a suppression. I'm not suggesting that. Mm-hmm. I'm suggesting that the, the degrading desire comes from a suppressed emotion underneath that. Mm-hmm. And what you need to do is discover what that emotion is or with the help of God's love, remove it as a cause from within your soul so that you no longer feel the degrading desire. Mm -hmm. So rather than suppressing the degrading desire, you are better off feeling the degrading desire without acting upon it and allowing yourself to understand its cause or the reason for its existence. Mm -hmm. If you do that, you'll discover the reason and with the help of divine love, you can even erase the reason for the, for the degrading thought or the, de- the desire for the degrading action. Mm-hmm. And as a result of that, you won't take the action in the future mistakenly or willingly through forgetting to, to control the degrading action. Sure. Once you remove the cause in the soul, then there's no need to uh, be afraid of taking any further actions along that, on that, in that path because... The cause for taking those actions has disappeared. Sure. What I'm suggesting is that if you shut down the emotional experience, in other words, if you feel a degrading feeling within yourself, a feeling that you want to take an action that you know is out of harmony with love, and you suppress it, you are now suppressing all aspects of your soul. Mm. So this is not going to be very helpful for you in your future in terms of experiencing joy. What you need to do is allow the expression of the feeling of the f- feeling that, or the desire that would normally cause you to act in a degraded way. Mm-hmm. And instead of acting in it, feel it instead. And feel it enough so that you connect with the underlying cause. Mm-hmm. Now, that is not suppressing the soul. Right? Yeah. It's, it's the choice to not feel it and the choice to suppress the feeling of it that is going to suppress your soul and therefore suppress all other aspects of your soul. Because a lot of us feel that's how we be a good person is to suppress those those things. And that's why it never works. Sooner or later (laughs) in in our future we finish up doing, whether it's on on earth or in the spirit world, we usually finish up doing the things that we've tried to suppress in our past unless we've allowed ourselves to feel them and find the cause. So let's take an example again. Mm -hmm. I'm at work and it's a long day. I've been really busy and right before it's time to go home, my boss calls me into their office and she says, you know, there's these problems with what you've been doing and unless you fix this, we're in dire straits. And, you know, and I, there's there's lots of feelings come up in me of um, guilt, worry, uh, feeling ashamed, Mm -hmm. disapproved of. Mm -hmm. I walk out of the office, I kick my toe, um, I feel I feel Which is terrible. another indication that you're already suppressing the emotions you just felt. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I walk out the door and I go, thank God that day's over. I'm going home to have a big glass of wine. Mm-hmm. Now from... What is the way, what is going on, and how can I? How does this? Well, apply yeah, to I'm going home to that big house of wine. The wine is a great way of suppressing or depressing the experience of these sad emotions that you're feeling, right? Mm-hmm. So it's a choice to suppress. Mm-hmm. If you choose to suppress, you're going to find that different aspects of your life are going to be affected, besides the one that just got affected by the exposure of these emotions. Yep. So my suggestion, instead of doing that, would be would be if we're in a perfect world, you'd sit in the office having a good cry (laughs) while you're getting told these things (laughs) and you'd feel tired and overwhelmed and exhausted in that moment. Now, for most people, they don't allow that to occur and and probably, ironically, if you did allow that to occur, you'd probably receive less attack from your boss (laughs) than you finished up getting, right, in the stoic uh, defence. But 
most people don't allow that, so they get the continued attack from their boss until they leave. But then if they walked out the door and felt the feelings of it all and allowed themselves to truly feel the feelings that were triggered, mm -hmm. they would probably sit in their car and have a good cry for 20 minutes, yeah. right, about the different things that were, different emotions that they felt as a result, and unappreciated and a lot of other emotions they would have felt. By the time they got home, their soul would not be suppressed. Mm -hmm. They would not need a drink, mm -hmm. right? And they'd also probably enjoy whatever happened at home. And then their kids get home from school and they'd have much more... Energy. Energy, and pleasure. Joy and, and pleasure. Them. They wouldn't... And in fact, if they had released the emotion related to the work-based event, by the time they got home, the work-based event wouldn't even be in their mind. Mm. They wouldn't even be thinking about it anymore. When it's fully released, you don't even think about it anymore. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't even bother them anymore. They wake up the next day completely, like... Unaffected happy. Yep. and happy by the uh, and unaffected by the experience. When we suppress, though, so when we go, so we suppressed it in the office. Mm -hmm. We go, we didn't sit in the car and have a cry. We got home. We didn't have a cry when we got home. We suppressed that. We have our drink. That helps suppress even further. Then we have trouble nights, sleep, all sorts of things. Uh, all sorts of other pain occurs as a result of this suppression, with the addition that. Anything that happens at home that we could have otherwise enjoyed, we will not be able to enjoy. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if our husband comes home all amorous and <laughs> wants to have, make love, we won't be able to do that either. Right? Or if we do, we won't if really we do, be we, we having We won't be pleasure. really having pleasure. We yeah. won't be in it. Yeah. If our children come home and we want to hear the joy of their day, we won't be able to actually connect with the joy of their day either. Mm -hmm. Because there's all these other aspects of our life that are getting shut down because we've chosen to shut down this particular part of our soul. And that's like a microcosm of really what you're saying happens on, on a lifetime scale. Yes. So that's You, you think one... of every single day, most people get events, the law of attraction brings them events, which cause them to feel and experience certain emotions that they don't want to feel. And when, instead of allowing themselves to feel it, in other words, instead of being humble, Mm -hmm. they, they won't allow themselves to feel it, so they suppress. Yeah. Not understanding that suppression is going to cause further damage to their own soul and further damage in their ability to experience joy mm. in the future. Because in that example we gave, a lot of people would say, yeah, well, she had a stressful day at work. Of course, things aren't going to go that great when she gets home. I don't agree. If she had cried before she got home, she would find that things would go great when she gets home. Yeah. Exactly. If she released the emotion that the event triggers, the event that she is attracted because of her own emotions, actually, and if she released the emotion the event triggered, by the time she got home, she would be back in a place of joy. And over, over many years, our continual that. suppression of... Because events are bringing us things to, to trigger past suppression. Mm. And if we continue to suppress, it's like compacting the soul... And, and forming barrier upon barrier over these emotions that yes. we're afraid to feel. And this is why, the reason why many people, by the time they get to 80 or 90 years of age, are so suppressed. Mm. And you can feel how suppressed they are. Like yeah. Most people can feel how suppressed they are. Yeah. It's not like it requires any sensitivity mm -hmm. to feel how suppressed they are. They are so suppressed because of a lifetime of suppression, mm -hmm. not understanding that every suppression that they engage through their lifetime has caused their soul to shrink and it caused the expression of other more po positive emotions to also shrink. Mm. And so they get to a point where you can't even feel any positive emotions in them anymore. Yeah. Got you. Mm. So in the example of the woman who comes home from work, a lot of people might dismiss her bad night as stress but really we're saying that she's suppressing an aspect of herself that next month when she goes on holiday, she's not even going to experience as much joy, joy as she could have because she's suppressed this thing. And exactly. in 10 years' time at her daughter's wedding, she's still not going to feel as much joy as she could have because she's suppressing. Exactly. And by this time, continually suppressing this Probably thing. other emotions. Yeah. She, she would be attracting events that trigger these emotions as well because God wants us to express them yeah. rather than suppress them. Yeah. So because, she, because over this period of time now, she will have attracted a long series of events 
to trigger these particular same emotions. Yeah. Through her soul's condition attracting, through the law of attraction, these events, she was suppressing every one of them, not realising that not only is she suppressing the experience of the particular event, but now she's adding further damage to the soul in the sense that she's suppressing other aspects of joy, other aspects of pleasure inside of the soul, which now also will need to be exposed through negative attractions. Yeah. So you're creating a, a, a minefield <laughs> of, you know, for your own soul when you suppress one emotion. And I feel that if people fully understood what effects it had, they would look at this aspect of suppression and go, well, I'm going to never do that again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> because it is such a powerfully negative thing to do to your own soul yes. to suppress any emotion. And if we put that then from the opposite perspective, say five years ago when we met, I feel like, I'd been suppressing a lot of emotion mm -hmm. for a long time. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us are, mm -hmm. as adults. We, mm -hmm. We're just seeking pleasure, suppressing everything negative. And using alcohol, drugs, all sorts of uh, external stimuli. Lots of external or depressants. things. And distractions. And distractions. Yeah. Using even time. We, you know, we, we keep ourselves busy so we don't have to feel. Yeah. That's another distraction. And so by the end, we, we hardly feel anything. And a lot of people reach middle age and go, mm, nothing feels very good anymore. Exactly. Just this is why. Nothing. So what, what's the possibility for us as adults if we have been suppressing a lot of things and suddenly we connect to just one thing? Does this mean that suddenly our potentials for experiencing yes. joy... The opposite suddenly, is also the case. Yeah. If, I, if I have an allowance of one emotion above all others... Mm -hmm then obviously all other emotional experiences will also expand. Mm. So this is the positive aspect of this, of this principle of the soul. So, so if I even, and this is why you find people have sort of a, a, an amazing experience of some kind in their 30s, 40s or 50s, that all of a sudden softens them to a heap of other experiences. Yeah. And this is what happens. Their soul is suppressed one aspect of it sort of breaks out of the suppression. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Whoop, you know, through the yeah. law of attraction, yeah. attracting an event that, that causes them to enable a desire within them. And all of a sudden, bang, they, they grab hold of that desire. Mm -hmm. Now, because they've grabbed hold of that desire and also allowed this emotion mm -hmm. above all others, mm -hmm. all other emotional experiences Just expand as also well. expand in their potential. This also means that all other painful emotional experience that have been suppressed also expand, mm -hmm. which also means that there is the potential that they'll have a great experience and then ball for a week <laughs> because uh, they've allowed the greater, the greater expansion of their soul's experience of the particular, of all emotion. Is this what happens <laughs> sometimes people say when they have their first child and suddenly there's this expansion of joy and it's all so emotional and suddenly they feel all these other things. And suddenly they start crying every day and sometimes in joy, sometimes in pain <laughs> yeah. and, they and don't, then, half the time they don't even know why they're crying <laughs> yeah. and people call it depression. And, uh, um, and depression can be the suppression of yeah. emotion. But, but when a person's crying all the time and it's not uh, as a result of suppression but a rather a result of allowance, then you'll actually feel like the expansion of the soul is occurring. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. they, and they feel softer rather than they someone feel who feels softer rather than harder. Depressed feels quite um, distant from themselves often. Well, the person who's depressed is is actually suppressing rage. Yeah. So the major emotion you feel from a person who's depressed generally is the rage that's underneath the suppression. Yeah. And uh, you know the reality is that a person who's depressed or getting depressed a lot needs to allow the expression of their rage. Mm not towards the people they're in a rage with, but going outside and hitting a baseball bat against a bag or something and yelling and screaming and swearing until it's all out of them. Sure. And then they'll connect to some of their fear and sadness that's underneath that. Sure. But, but if they suppress the emotion of rage, they go into depression. Now, it's clinically accepted that depression is a state where you can't even feel anything. Mm. You can't feel touch, your sensation, sexual pleasure, Emotional pleasure, joy, you don't have, and this is a case of full suppression. Mm. But oftentimes the depression is li limited to just one or two emotions that have been attempted to suppress. Yes. 
And, and if people can access that, then suddenly... Then all the other aspects of their soul will grow. The depression is And the gone. depression will go. Yeah. And that's the, what, another thing they don't understand, that, that so this principle of suppression, not understanding it, is the major cause of depression on the planet. Mm. And you can see, too, that women, I think, are about three to five times more susceptible to depression than men. So why is that? Because women are more accepting of suppressing rage than men. Mm. Men usually allow the experience of their rage, oftentimes in, their, in ways that are not very nice, yeah. but they do allow the experience, whereas women generally won't allow the experience of their rage or anger. Mm -hmm. And as a result, they suppress their rage and anger and get into a state that's depressed. Yeah. And this is a cultural thing. Men, culturally, it's more acceptable for men to express uh, anger yeah. than it is culturally for women to, to express anger. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the main reasons why women are more susceptible to depression than men, mm. because they don't understand the principle of suppression. <laughs> they suppress their anger, then they are going to get depression, to be mm. depressed. Mm. Yeah, because by the time you get to anger, you're already suppressing quite a lot. You're suppressing grief yep. and fear, and all of your addictions not being met. Yeah. So you're, you're suppressing a whole line of things by the time you get to anger. And then if you suppress anger, there's there's no more emotion to yeah. suppress. Now you go into depression, where a state where you don't have any, seemingly have any emotion. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Or, or seemingly cannot experience any emotion. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So I feel that, you know, if people understood suppression, a lot of so called mental illnesses would also be alleviated. Yeah. Yeah. Certainly. People also don't understand that suppression has a major effect on spirit activity in terms of overcloaking of spirits from, on, on a person on earth. When you suppress a particular emotion, spirits use that particular emotion that you're suppressing in order to control you. The emotion you're suppressing is usually an emotion you're afraid of. And, and then spirits can use this fear against you. They get you to do things you wouldn't normally do mm. by manipulating this emotion inside of you that you're unwilling to experience. So most people do not, are not aware that it's the suppression of their soul that causes all spirit attraction. So when I say all spirit attraction, all malevolent spirit attraction is caused by suppression of something inside of the soul. Yeah. So, so again, if you suppress the soul, you're not only inviting your own depression or your own suppression of all of your emotion, but you're also inviting spirits, people who have lived on earth, who are now in the spirit world, coming along and influencing your life through the things you are suppressing. Mm. And, uh, and that obviously has a huge effect on people's lives on the planet. In fact, people have no idea how much spirit influence is, is affecting most people's lives because of their suppression. Yeah. So it's a very important aspect of the soul to understand this point of suppression and a very important thing to get emotionally inside of yourself to understand that every time I suppress a particular thing inside of my soul, and usually it's a painful experience that I'm trying to suppress. Yeah. Every time I do this, I am not only suppressing the rest of myself, but I am also inviting control externally, yeah. whether it's people on earth or people in the spirit world, who will now control me through the thing that I'm trying to suppress. Mm -hmm. So you're inviting a lot of very, very difficult things when you choose to suppress your emotion. Now, I feel that it's much more simpler to just allow the expression of the emotion. Yeah. Because when you allow the expression of the emotion, none of the subsequent results of suppression occur. You have the ability to experience joy as well as pain. But in addition to that, you are not controlled by people externally and in particular not controlled by spirits whom you can't see. So there's a lot of advantages. Yes to understanding the law of, the law of suppression on the soul yeah. and how suppression occurs. Mm. Thank you. It's very valuable. All right. It's a pleasure. Mm. Thanks, guys. Thank you.